Alpách je 12 000 let starý les v německém Poríní. A Hambach je také největší uhelný důl v Německu. A možná právě tady se dnes rozhoduje o budoucnosti těžby uhlí. Right now there's a massive fight going on in Germany about the future of lignite, which for a long time has been the main source of Germany's electricity. I've been part of this emerging anti-coal and climate justice movement. And our position is Germany has to get out of coal and lignite right now. Now, there's some sort of fuzziness about what right now means. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has clearly said if we want to stay within the 1.5 degrees warming target set by the Paris Agreement, which, just to remind people, we want to reach 1.5 degrees because above 1.5 degrees, huge parts of sub-Saharan Africa would be uninhabitable, there'd be no agriculture there, there'd be massive droughts, massive migration movements, huge social conflicts, already at 1.5 degrees, so we don't want to go up to 2 degrees, right. In general, I would say we are on the way to go out of coal. We have certain plans to go out of coal 50% to 2030. Until the middle of the century, we will finish coal. That are our plans, and I think this is the real plan. It make no sense to go out very soon and left, leave your landscape that no one wants to live in. Yeah? We have to look in the front, we have to look on the long term, and we will uh, give our part to meet the CO2 reduction. The date will be set much sooner. We have very high costs to recultivate the, the lignite mines, which are not in, in the stocking in the, in the fund up to now. But this is the first thing. Second thing is if you end coal very early, um, electricity prices will go up. And then you have the industry, which is relying on, on, on certain electricity prices, and they will have real problems. We are talking about hundreds to 300,000 um, uh, workplaces uh, in Germany. You don't want to get an, an industry totally unstable in Germany, yeah, because German industry is quite good at the moment, but in this region you will have instability. Yeah? And all we ask for is to have the time to create better workplaces that our workers can go in these new workplaces. Our people know that they have to change their workplaces, but we need time for it, and that's what we ask for. Právě času je podle odpůrců uhlí málo. V reakci na sílicí protiuhelné hnutí a stále hlasitější volání věců po řešení příčin klimatické změny vedlo v Německu k tomu, že tamní vláda letos sestavila uhelnou komisi. Ta má do konce roku stanovit finální datum odchodu země od uhlí. Do konce roku se má rozhodnout o budoucnosti odvětví, které podle naprosté většiny klimatických věců silně přispívá ke změnám klimatu ale zároveň vytváří zisky v miliardách eur ročně. Boj o veřejné mínění je proto vyostřený. Symbolem odporu proti uhlí se letos stal les Hambach. Během posledních šesti let se tu vystřídalo několik stovek lidí. Žili zde ve dřevěných domech v korunách stromů a bránili kácení lesa a rozšiřování sousedního uhelného dolu. Když začala na konci léta policie blokádu vyklízet, Sjelo se sem 50 tisíc lidí z celého Německa a ze zahraničí vyjádřit nesouhlas s těžbou uhlí. Oh, also public area, complete public. You can stay as long as you want and leave your stuff there. I would say is one of the first places where people can come to the forest, get a bit educated, how to how to stay in the forest and how to deal with the police and the securities. Uh, also, lots of um, material support comes from mm -hmm. here inside of the forest, yeah. inside to the forest. Yeah. So some people live here for a long time, yeah. Some people live here since six years, mm -hmm. but there's not many people left of these people. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. okay. Because some and of them are in prison and so on. Usually how many people are staying here? Or? For the weekend, there's lots and lots of people. It's like 100 people. Mm -hmm. But for the week, there's less. It's like 20, I would say. We will get huge support if they want to evict us. Yeah. We will get very huge support. Mm -hmm. 
Do Poriní se během letošního podzimu sjelo několik tisíc lidí na akci Ende Gelende. Jde o masovou akci občanské neposlušnosti, během které aktivisté a aktivistky obsazují uhelnou infrastrukturu. Z Česka jsem vyjel celý vlak lidí. Jsme právě v Praze na hlavním nádraží, kde asi stovka aktivistů a aktivistek vyráží podpořit mezinárodní hnutí a akci Ende Gelende proti těžbě uhlí. Hodinama, tak jsme se z nádraží moc neposunuli. Probíhá tady klasická procedura znovu, ale na rozdíl od stávky na hranici nemá tak úplně jasné odůvodnění a, a proto to trvá mnohem déle. Někteří, někteří aktivisté se odmítli identifikovat. To je jen usual police control, just because we had informations that some of the people are planning things what is against German law. So this is normal to check the bags, check the identity of the people. Na Ende Gelände se běžně setkávají klimatičtí aktivisté a aktivistky z celé Evropy. Blokáda uhelné infrastruktury je nejviditelnější částí těchto akcí. Mimo nich tu ve stanových táborech probíhá i několik dní přednášek a dílen, během kterých se klimatická hnutí z různých zemí vzájemně inspirují pro svou další činnost. Po jedné z akcí Ende Gelende ostatně vznikl i český klimakem. Legální průvod policie se stavila na posledním místě, kde se jim to snadno může podařit. Další cesta už vede přímo do domu. Zdrav sa vydal rozkaz a utekali sme všetci cez polie. Prešli sme niekoľko plotov. Počas tej akcie zo pár ľudí dostali, ale väčšina z nás, ako vidíte, sa dostala za ploty a práve v tejto chvíli blokujeme kolenice. Kolenice blokujeme kvôli tomu, že zastavíme dodávky uhlia do elektrárne, takže i blokovať infraštruktúru je tiež rovnako dôležité. A rozdielili sme sa na niekoľko fingrov, na niekoľko skupín, z toho každá skupina má svoju úlohu. Táto akcia je hlavne symbolická, aby zdvihla povedomie o klimatickej zmene a o hrozných dôsledkoch, ktoré má posledný priemysel na ľudské životy a na klamatúru. 
We are here with the Ende Gelände action of massive civil disobedience. We are here on the coal tracks. Usually the coal train is going here, but right now it's stopped, which is a massive success. There are thousands of people on the tracks right now. We reached our goal, we are right there we want to be. And this is a strong, strong stand on for climate justice. For example, there's a group in, in Czech, in the Czech Republic, which is very active there. There was a climate camp this year also, where part of Ende Gelände went and supported um, the Czech movement. And right now, a lot of Czech people are coming here and supporting us. And sometimes you need um, to do um, action of civil, civil disobedience because uh, the time is running out. We are right now, the climate change is going quicker and quicker. We are reaching a point uh, where there's uh, no return. So we need a very quick coal phase out and a phase out of all fossil fuels. That is why we take matters into our own hands and step uh, over the boundaries of the law. Because the police is uh, criminalizing the protest against uh, coal and yeah we have to do this because if not we would all get a lot of uh, repression of the state. That's glue. I'm doing some of this on my fingers so the police can't identify the fingerprint. The idea that the civil disobedience action by a few thousand people radicalizes a society that is I'm looking talking about Germany now, that actually burns more of the dirtiest fossil fuels lignite than any other country in the world is insane because that society really is already bad. Like it is in a way an extremist energy policy. Essentially, you've got to be a radical nut job to believe that it is okay to continue burning lignite on a grand scale. Now to me that is radicalism. To me that is extremism. To me that is the kind of insanity against which we are guarding. Now, back to the idea of civil disobedience. Every society will give itself rules that reproduce that society. A racist society will give itself racist rules. A sexist society will give itself sexist rules. A society that is ecologically destructive and therefore globally unjust will give itself rules that justify uh, ecological destruction and global injustice. That's extremism. That's insanity. If we're radicalizing people to take action against that, I will say, yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. And the last point is, you really just need to look at climate science and at climate journalism to realize the world is changing radically anyway. And if we don't take action to make a change in a better direction, it'll change in a far more shitty direction. And honestly, that's not the world I want to live in. Německá energetická tranzice se nazývá energie vende. Expertní studie a politickou strategii pro její hladký průběh tvoří primárně organizace Agora Energie Vende. V Německu jsme se sešli s jejím předsedou, aby nám vysvětlil rozložení sil, které budou určovat budoucnost uhlí v zemi. And then take probably another 10 years after that. 2030 is what environmental groups are proposing. The energy industry, the lignite industry, is saying rather 2040. If you look at the situation currently in Germany, we have regions which already have 80% renewables in the north, in Schleswig-Holstein. There are lots of new technologies coming up and actually if you look, ask the grid uh, engineers they say uh, what we're doing now we would have never imagined possible 10 years ago and now we're doing it. The role of the movements is to bring the issue top of the agenda for politics. All parties in the German parliament need to come up with their answers. Přechod od fosilních paliv směrem k energetice plně závislé na obnovitelných zdrojích je dnes v Německu brán všemi zúčastněnými stranami jako jistá budoucnost. Všichni se na přechod aktivně připravují a ve výsledku se odlišují prakticky jen v jedné, ale poměrně zásadní otázce. Za jak dlouho by měl definitivní konec uhlí a dalších fosilních paliv přijít? Those employed in the mining zones um, by, let's say, 10,000 employees, but uh, at the end of the day, um, we are able to compensate that. Uh, we have uh, activities uh, at the moment, and we are working since 
are 15 years on this kind of transition. A lot of stocks are owned by the local community. So, for example, the county of Duren has 2 million stocks of RWE. Uh, you can imagine if you hold 2 million stocks, and it is 1 euro per year, in the former times we got 1 euro per year, it's 2 million euro. For example, uh, the county Duren is running as well a public swimming pool. You know, for families, we have a low um, price for the entrance fees and uh, we have a need of, let's say, a, a financial support of round about 800, 900,000 euro per year. We can only cover that at, by taxes or by the income via these kind of stocks. So if, if we get less there, we have to increase the taxes. Simple. And the next year, RWE will make 60% of their income from renewables and to the future 75% of our uh, investment will go into renewables. So RWE knows that this has to go into renewables and then on, on its way in this way. Okay. When the Coal Commission produces a report, if it produces a report, some kind of compromise, we will be on the street saying, yeah, thanks for that, that's not enough. If they don't produce a compromise, if the commission goes bust, then we'll be on the street saying, okay, you screwed up, we're going to keep doing the work, we're going to enforce a coal phase out now. And I imagine that we're going to escalate our actions. I mean, you know, in a few years, our first action was 2015, we have grown from 1,200 in the action to 6,500. Basically, for example, there has been a debate in the European climate movement in 2020 to take massive coordinated actions around the continent. Um, folks in the climate movement have talked about, you know, are we able to blockade all, all open cast lignite mines in Germany at the same time? Are we able to blockade one for a very long time? Like, these are all discussions we'll need to have when, we, when we're clear on what the Coal Commission's results are. But the fight is, the fight will continue and it will be people taking action on the streets, in the pits and on the train tracks. Uhelné korporace a regiony, které získávají peníze z těžby uhlí, se svých příjmů pochopitelně nechtějí vzdát. Klimatická změna se ale rok od roku projevuje výrazněji. Sucho už dnes způsobuje vysychání některých německých řek a důsledkem změn klimatu je i masová migrace z Blízkého východu a Afriky do Evropy a zvlášť do Německa. Volání po urychleném odchodu od uhlí proto v zemi rychle sílí. If we look at this summer, that hot summer everywhere in Germany, which has led to now uh, the Rhine having so little water that the ships cannot uh, go on it anymore, uh, that was uh, for the German public another um, wake-up call to say um, no. Climate change is happening and we need to do something about it. 